Now here's my simple model of loanable funds, and if you'll notice in the accounts I have here have loans and reserves, which are the assets of the banking sector, and nothing has happened so far over here because banks are just intermediaries. Uh, all that's happened is the patient agent has stashed $100 million, let's say, uh, in, in his account, and the bank stores that as reserves over here. That's the end, end of what the banking sector is actually doing. Then we have lending being between the patient agent, lending to the inpatient agent. The inpatient agent then paying interest on the loans, also repaying the loans. The patient agent hiring workers, the inpatient agent doing the same. The workers consuming by consuming from the patient agent and from the inpatient agent. The banks, who've actually got, got cash right now, would if they did consume that way, that over with uh, consuming the inpatient agent. And then the inpatient agent, the, the patient agent, uh, hang on, which one? <laughs> bit lost in this. The uh, patient, the inpatient agent consumes from the patient, and the patient agent consumes from the inpatient. That's the overall logic. And what I have down here in the actual model is, let's head down here a bit, all this lending, all the activity being based on the amount of money in the account. So workers' consumption depends upon the balance in their account, given some turnover of their accounts, uh, ditto for the inpatient, inpatient agent, and the bank, and in the economy itself. The turnover of the amount of money passing through the patient agent's account and the inpatient agent's account added together is the total turnover in the economy, which is GDP, and part of that becomes wages, depending upon what uh, worker share of, of income is. So that's the logic of the model. Now, if I run the model, notice the GDP here is a total flat line while debt is rising and the debt ratio is rising as the lending from patient to inpatient agent goes on. If I make the rate of lending faster by the patient agent, so taking less years to lend the money, I've got from four to three, notice the debt ratio goes skyrocketing, but nothing happens to GDP. And if I del uh, delay, delay how long uh, the inpatient agent takes to repay for, say, a 10 year cycle to uh, way out to 30, then again the debt ratio rises and it actually exceeds GDP here, <coughs> but nothing happens to GDP at all. So then we go to the stage where there's suddenly uh, much less willingness to lend by the patient agent and much more desire to repay debt by the patient agent and bugger all happens to the economy. The debt level falls, the debt ratio falls, the amount of money in the accounts changes radically, but there's no impact upon GDP whatsoever. So in a loanable funds point of view of the world, it doesn't matter. The debt level ratio can be ignored. It's macroeconomically unimportant. 